What if you only had $500 and needed to buy a good set of pots and pans? What would you buy? That's a fun little game we're gonna play today here on Uncle Scott's Kitchen. Let's jump in and get started. What's up guys? Hi and welcome to Uncle Scott's Kitchen. What would you buy with your $500 if you needed a set of pots and pans? Um, easy answer here, you go down to Walmart and for $79 you get the Paris Hilton 10-piece set, uh, non-stick, pink, glittery with the uh, gold heart-shaped knobs and you're good to go, right? No, uh, no offense to uh, Paris Hilton, but my fear with that set and any kind of cheapo set from a discount store is that they wouldn't cook very well, uh, they would need to be replaced and they would probably end up in a landfill, and we don't want that. What I'm doing today is picking good quality pieces, pieces that are a foundation, and if you're just starting out, these are pieces that could be added to down the road. These will not need to be replaced. So we want some good stuff, and we only got 500 bucks. So with that said, let's jump in and get started. Gonna start with the frying pans, kind of the workhorses in the kitchen. And the first one I'm going to choose is the all-clad D3 tri-ply stainless steel 12-inch frying pan with lid. I recently saw this guy for $99, so I'm gonna round that off to 100. Uh, that's my first choice. Next up, a Lodge 10-inch cast iron skillet. $20 for the 10-inch. Uh, a little bit of a wrinkle here if you are a Costco member. You can also get an 11 inch for $20, but $20 for the 10 inch Lodge cast iron. Is there a better bargain in the world of cookware than a Lodge cast iron skillet? I don't think so. I think every kitchen should have one. And for my third frying pan, nine and a half inch Debouillet Mineral B carbon steel omelet pan with the curved sides. Uh, $75 for that guy. And that puts our running total at $195. So I got three frying pans so far. And here I think you get uh, a variety of sizes, obviously, but also a lot of versatility in uh, materials. The stainless steel, if you're gonna do anything with tomatoes or anything with vinegar or acidic ingredients, wine, lemon juice, lime juice, that's gonna work really well in the uh, stainless steel, so you get some versatility there. With the cast iron, I can't tell you, growing up in Alabama, how much food I ate out of a large cast iron skillet from my mom and grandmother. Cornbread, uh, okra, you can fry in it. You can do high temp sears of steaks. You can use it in the oven for cornbreads, on and on. Fantastic bargain there. And then the Debouillet carbon steel omelet pan. You could also use that for steaks if you wanted to, but I like having a dedicated uh, egg pan, so I use that for my fried eggs and my omelets. And with the carbon steel, if you learn how to cook an egg properly, you don't need a nonstick skillet for eggs. You can get nonstick eggs in your carbon steel. Now with the $500 uh, spending constraint here, I'm looking for some versatility. And my next piece is a Lodge enamel cast iron Dutch oven. Six quart model is currently $80, screaming deal there. And it's great on the stovetop, soups, stews, chilies. You can also use it in the oven for things like a pepozo or some uh, home-baked artisan bread. And along the versatility lines, I am not including a big eight quart or bigger stock pot. You gotta make some sacrifices somewhere. I think the six quart is adequate for uh, being used to boil water for pasta as well. Next up, and this one may be a little controversial, a little bit of a showpiece, but I think there's room. The Falk, 1.4 quart, uh, 18 centimeter, uh, stainless steel line, copper saucier. Fantastic, fantastic pan. We use this pan. This may be our most heavily used pan in our kitchen, believe it or not, because I have a five-year-old son. I like to fix him a hot breakfast, so it's often cheese grits, oatmeal, cream of wheat. It's absolutely fantastic for one or two servings there, reheating soup. I also make a lot of broccoli and cauliflower gratins, and this is a great size for a two cup uh, bechamel. 
and with a little cheese in there that becomes a Mornay if you want to be kind of snooty, but a good size for that. The one thing I would do differently, uh, this pan came with the uh, cast iron handle and I love the looks of it. You can get the same deal on the exact same pan, but with a different handle material. That's what I would do. You can get it with stainless steel. This one, if you put it in the sink and it gets wet and you don't do dishes for several hours, you run the risk of rusting on the cast iron handle. Stainless steel, you wouldn't have to worry about that. $154, that brings us up to $429 so far. And we are quickly running out of room. Um, we've got three frying pans, a smaller saucepan and a Dutch oven. I think we need a bigger saucepan here. What I'm gonna go with, and this is a little more mass market than we normally talk about around here, but a Cuisinart four quart, Stainless steel tri-ply saucepan with lid, $55. I don't have that model, I have the three-quart model. But one thing I wanna do is give a shout out to Cuisinart. I have had this pan for 19 years and it is still going strong, performed flawlessly. That brings us up to $484. And I'm gonna throw in a little bit of a wrinkle here. And that is a Mapfer nine and a half inch carbon steel crepe pan, $23. Absolutely screaming deal on this pan. I realize that brings us up to 507, but I've been rounding off and it's my game and it's close enough. Uh, fantastic pan. And not only can you make crepes on it, you can make pancakes, you can make a grilled cheese. And also you can uh, warm tortillas on it. So we make a lot of quesadillas with cheese on the old crepe pans around here, but a fantastic pan to add to the arsenal. So if you ask me, I think that's a pretty doggone good lineup of pans. You got a variety of sizes, a variety of materials. You got kind of a showpiece with a uh, piece of copper. You could do almost anything you need to do on the stovetop and you get some uh, oven versatility as well. Now, if you had an induction stove, you wouldn't be able to use that copper. So you need to swap something out there. I think this lineup would work pretty well on an electric flat top though. And I'd like to know what you guys think. What would you do differently? What would your lineup be? Let me know down in the comments section below. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see more like it. Also, if you wanna buy any of these pans, I have affiliate shopping links below. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen.